eight step format for commercial service calculations. It's different than dwelling service calculations as far as what pieces we're dealing with. Dwelling unit, we get to you know, derate to a, such a high rate because we're not going to have all the lights on. You're not going to be, you know, using all the load at a dwelling unit at any given time. In a commercial application, you're going to be using continuous loads a lot. You know, think about a retail sales type area. Those lights are on 24 hours a day. You know, their air conditioning equipment's running constantly. Their uh, refrigeration equipment, freezing equipment's running constantly. So the heavier loads and more constantly used loads. We're still going to go to step one through eight. I'm going to look at uh, table 220.12 to give us a load per square foot. And this is the outside dimensions of the building. This 220.12 table has a lot of different things in here. So these are the VA per square foot because the square foot of a commercial application could be massively large. And what we do is that we just put it into a calculation like we've done in the dwelling unit. Now for lighting, 125% for all continuous loads. You need to know what continuous loads are. Continuous loads are something that's going to run full capacity for three hours or more. Well, think about any retail space. They're not going to be open for two hours and 59 minutes every day. They're going to be open, most of them, 24 hours a day. So their lighting is absolutely a continuous load. But down here at the bottom underneath that table, it says the 125% multiplier for a continuous load as specified in 210.20A is included when using the unit loads in this table for calculating the minimum lighting load. So 125% for the lighting is already included in these numbers. But there's other loads that might be portrayed in a commercial setting that you're going to have to kick it by 125%. These are already included in there. So our step two takes us to 220.42. It says demand for hotel, motel, hospital, warehouses. And it says all others are 100%. So in hotels and motels, the first 20,000 is at 60%. And then anything above 20,000 up to 100,000 is 50%. The remainder above 100,000 is 35%. This is just how you, once you've tabulated everything, you deal with this reduction or demand, okay? Step number three is the same thing that we've done in the dwelling unit. We figure out which is the largest load. Compare the heat against the AC and omit the smaller. 220.60 does not really have a whole lot of words to help us understand that, but I'll turn to it and show you where that is. Non-coincident loads says, where it's unlikely that two or more non-coincident loads will be used simultaneously, it shall be permissible to use only the largest load. So we're going to figure out which one's the heaviest load, either heat or AC in the building, and we're going to keep that and we're not going to count the other. Step number four takes us to a lot of pieces in 220.14. 220.14 starts right over here, says other loads, all occupancies. We got A through M. So what you do here is you just pick out what you're talking about. We got A, it says specific appliances. B is dryers and electric cooking. C is motors. D is luminaires, we call them lights. E is heavy duty lamp holders. F is signs and outline lighting. Now signs and outline lighting, that's one that just the wording gets people confused. The sign, you probably know what a sign looks like. Then the outline lighting, and those are gonna be calculated 1200 volt amps, minimum. A show window, you see those in retail spaces, that's where they usually try to display their goods. And what we got here is 200 volt amps per foot of show window. Then we got multi-outlet assemblies up here in H. Now multi-outlet assemblies are like a plug strip, and it says where appliances are unlikely to be used simultaneously, each five foot or fraction thereof is considered 180 VA a piece. Where appliances that are plugged in are expected to be used simultaneously, each one foot is 180. Part I is receptacles. Now in dwelling units in part J, just a reminder that the three VA per square foot in a dwelling unit includes every receptacle in the place. In part I, we got receptacle outlets. This is specific to commercial applications. This is except as covered in J, which is dwelling units, and K, which is another way to deal with it. We'll get there in a moment. Receptacle outlets shall be calculated not less than 180 VA for each single or multiple receptacle on a one yoke. So a duplex receptacle actually has two receptacles. So it's 180 VA for each location where a receptacle or duplex receptacle resides. I've seen some receptacles that have three or four places to plug in on one yoke. The yoke is the metal framework that that plastic molding is connected to. So 180 VA for each one of those. 
Then it goes on to say a single piece of equipment consisting of multiple receptacles comprised of four or more. So we'll use a dark color highlight and talk about this one. Four or more receptacles. There's 90 VA per receptacle. So if we got four or more receptacles on one setup, we're going to do 90 VA per receptacle. So this is we're adding up receptacle loads and we're doing 180 VA for each receptacle or duplex receptacle and we're adding that to our loads. Now we're just going to skip over J because J was specific to dwelling units. Let's go to K. K says for office buildings. So office buildings, the receptacle loads shall be calculated at the larger of one or two, the larger. Number one says a calculated load from I. So that refers us back to I, 180 VA per, right? After all demand factors have been applied. But two is our catch-all. What if we don't know how many receptacles are going to end up in a building, which is typical of today's work? We know the outline, the footprint of a building. We do not know how many receptacles are going to be installed before that job is done. So if you don't know how many receptacles are going to be installed, you do one VA additional to this table over here for office buildings specifically, right, office buildings. So instead of this being 1.3, if you don't know the, the amount of receptacles, you just go 2.3, right? You add one VA per square foot. Now, that's all step number four. It kind of gives us a lowdown of all the different pieces and parts. Step number five takes us to table 220.44, demand for receptacle loads over 10 kVA. So 220.44, which is right here, and this is specific to, and it even says this, we're gonna highlight that, non-dwelling. I'm not talking about dwelling receptacles. And after you add up all your receptacles, it's 180 VA per, or you've done the one VA times the square foot, and you come up with you know, a big, big number, the first 10,000 or less is gonna be at 100%. Anything over 10,000 is gonna be at 50%, because let's, let's be real about this. A receptacle, it has no load. The only load that's gonna be used out of that receptacle is whatever's being plugged in. So they're giving you a diversity here, a reduction, because they don't expect that every receptacle is gonna have something plugged into it and used at full capacity at, you know, all day long. So that's a reduction for receptacle specifically. Then we're gonna go into step number six, and it's 220.56, and this is demand for kitchen equipment. It's another table. And this over here. And this is kitchen equipment. We're going to box this table in. And this is commercial load kitchen equipment. Specific only to commercial kitchens. And we're talking about, you know, adding up the name plates of all the different kitchen equipment. And it says, other than dwelling units. We're not talking about dwelling units. We're only talking about kitchen equipment in commercial applications. And we're adding up the name plates. And how many do, how many different pieces of equipment do we have in the, in the commercial kitchen? Once we get past two, we get to start taking a discount. And once we get to over six or six or more, it's 65% discount. So we're just adding up name plates and doing a derating factor based on how many different pieces of equipment that's in a commercial kitchen. Again, use some common sense here. There might be 10 different pieces of equipment in a commercial kitchen. You're probably not gonna be using all of them at the same time to their full load capacity. So it's giving us a discount there. Step number seven takes us to the largest motor and we're gonna increase that by 25%, just like we did in the dwelling unit. So if we go back to 50, we actually kind of got to do a, a little search and it takes us to Article 430.24, 25, and 26. And basically it tells us that we're going to increase the largest motor to 125%. Well, we've already got the 100% in there. When we get to step, step seven, we're just going to kick it by 25% more on step number seven. So whatever the largest motor is in FLC, full load current, we're going to multiply that by 25% more and add it into our total tally. Step number eight, we're just going to add everything up divided by the line voltage, whatever that might be. Now let me invest in this. If it's a 240 volt system, you just divide by 240. In most commercial buildings, it's a three-phase system. So on a three-phase system, I'll use a piece of paper to, to just to draw this up in a little simple math. If it's a three-phase system, you're gonna put the square root of three and apply it to the voltage. You have to do that. So let's say it's a 208 three-phase system. When you divide your total load in VA that you come up with, you're not gonna divide it by 208. You're gonna divide it by 208 times the square root of three. Well, the square root of three, just so you can get this math, you type in three and hit the little square root button. And you're gonna come up with 1.732 and some more. We'll cut it off at the third space past the decimal. So what you do with that is you take 208, multiply by 1.732 equals 360.256. So when you get down to your total deal here, total load in VA, and if it's a three phase 208 volt system, you're gonna, you're gonna divide it by 360.256, not 208. If it's 480 volt, same deal. If it's 480 volt, times 1.732. 
that equals 831.36. So that's your revised number to divide by. It says size the service by dividing the total VA by the line voltage. Well, if it's three phase, you've got to modify that line voltage by the 1.732. So it's 208 or 480. Once you figure out the total load in amps, you go over to the table 310.16 and you size the service conductors by the 75 degrees Celsius column. Whatever impasse you come up with, here's the size wire that you need to choose. Once you figure out the size of the wire that you're going to use for the service, then you can use that wire size and go to 250.66. It's over here, 250.66 based on the wire size. This is your size of your grand electro conductor size here. This is your size of your conductor used for your service whatever size that is. The largest grain electroconductor required by the National Electric Code is 3 aught. So if you come up with some large number and your equivalent is more than over 1100 kc mil, 3 aught is your answer for your water pipe and building steel.